How's it going everyone? So I recently picked up the Steam Deck and I gotta say, I absolutely love this thing. But after being a new time user, I found out that this thing has a lot of amazing features that's not really well talked about. And so in today's video, this will not only be a nice beginner guide, but also a refresher if you're a veteran or new to the Steam Deck, as this is everything cool that this thing can do. So this is gonna be a video about a bunch of amazing tips and tricks, as well as hidden features. And let's start off with the first one that I bet even veterans didn't know about which is the ability to pair your phone to the Steam Deck and listen to audio from like a podcast or your music or a YouTube video mixed together with the audio of your game. For starters, if you go into your settings and go into Bluetooth and you pair your iPhone onto the Steam Deck, you can literally stream anything on your iPhone to the Steam Deck as you're gaming. As you can kind of hear right here. And this allows me to actually enjoy my games while listening to like my podcasts or listening to music as I'm playing multiplayer games off these same speakers. And of course I can use Bluetooth headphones or, or wired headphones and listen to it all together and mix. I thought that was kind of cool. Next thing you should definitely know about the handheld is the shortcuts. Because if you ever need to use keyboard inputs, of course, if you long hold the Steam as well as the X at the same time, your keyboard will pop up. I ran out of keyboard super exposed and I'll talk more about that theme keyboard in a little bit. But by holding the steam bike button and bringing down the joystick, you could lower the brightness in real time just like this without having to go into your system settings. Another important one to know is the capability to take screenshots. And to take a screenshot, just hold down the steam button and press R1. And if there's a game acting funny or an app, hold the steam button and press B for five seconds and it'll force close the app just like this. But if you'd like to see the complete list of all your shortcuts, remember this button down here. If you long hold, it'll show you all the command shortcuts right here for your keyboard or button layouts, I should say. Now, if you have a limited edition Steam Deck like this white one, or you may have additional skins on your account, you just need to manually claim it. You'll be able to find the claim option in your account. And then just follow the on-screen text right here, and you should be able to claim all your skins as well as different video animation intros. But don't worry, there's some third-party ones you could also install if you don't have any in your account. And then once you have those claim skins claimed, just go into your system settings, go into the keyboard tab, and where it says current keyboard theme, this is where you can select between the different styles, and you can preview it right here on the side. A lot of people tend to forget that the Steam does have the ability to change between different style. Another cool tab can be located in the customize tab. Here's where you can change between the different startups. So this is the default startup, of course, but then you have the OLED one for the OLED version Steam Decks or the limited edition whites. And if you have a lot of points, you can view more Steam supported animations in the visit the point shop. So here you can peruse between multiple different styles. You can also substitute it with but these will cost you Steam points, unfortunately. Which is why I highly recommend installing Decky Loader. Decky Loader, think of this like an app store, as it gives you access to a bunch of cool customization abilities, as well as some nifty features that are disabled by default. So there'll be a reference video in the description down below that I followed that allowed me to install Decky right down here on the very bottom on your Steam Deck control center. That'd be one way to describe this menu. Because once you have Decky installed on your Steam Deck, download Animation Changer. If you don't see it, just tap the little store icon above here and just type in Animated Changer, but it should be on the top if you have a default to A to Z. And just tap Install. And now if we exit out of here and bring up that little menu once more and tap on Animation Changer, Manage Animation, here you could go and peruse between other community-made free animations you could select from. And of course, you could sort it with the newest, Otis, or most popular. And he could find some pretty awesome animations like this. But then you got some like Matrix style, as you see right here. These are pretty cool, and some of them are better than these actual Steam ones. Which reminds me, now if we boot up our device, hit reset, confirm. Although the animation is really cool, you can always just tap here, and this will bypass the animation and just put you directly in your main menu. Just real quick, if you could take two seconds to leave this video a like, that will be truly appreciated because I like to keep my videos sponsor-free. No integrated ads because I'm personally sick and tired of going on YouTube and there's always like a minute or two minute segment of ads. So if you also agree, leave that like button a like. I'll truly appreciate it and will allow me to continue making videos just like this. Now let's resume on. Now another mistake I have noticed and caught myself doing accidentally was whenever you launch a game, 
but then you decide, oh wait, I don't want to play this game. You don't necessarily have to force close each game whenever you're on it. The proper way to exit, you just tap the Steam icon and then tap either your library and select another game. But when you do that, don't just boot this game. It's better to just go back to that previous game you're, you launched and just tap exit and then confirm to exit the game from here. If you don't do this and you select another game, that previous game is still running in the background using resources. So for the best optimal performance, close the previous game if you're playing another game, unless you want it to resume back immediately. Now the beauty about this uh, travel case that your Steam Deck comes included with, if you think this case is too bulky for you, it's actually two case in one. You see, yes, you do have this little slot right here for your power adapter. And uh, this is a 3D printing adapter that I printed out. That's kind of cool. I have this one linked in the description down below if you want to 3D print this. But this just simply fits in here. It's not even in the way. It gives you a flatter profile than the previous bag thing that they gave us. But the cool thing about this case, if you feel like this is too bulky, there's another case in here that's just held together with Velcro. And this is a nice hard case for your Steam Deck that's thinner and sleeker than the whole chebang that we have here. A word I was not expecting myself to ever say. But it is indeed a two-in-one case that a lot of people don't know about. Now, the beauty about the Steam Deck is I've been finding myself playing my Steam Deck games on my Mac computer. And this is a great way to allow yourself to use your Mac peripherals, like your mouse and keyboard, to play some of your Steam VR games on your Mac, utilizing your Steam Deck hardware. The app is free to download and it's a free service that Steam offers. And this works on not just the Steam game menu, but also on the desktop version for Steam as well. And this is a good walk around if you don't own like a Steam dock, as you could wirelessly just connect your Steam Deck to your computer and control it all from here. Now when shopping around in the Steam store, yes, there are recommendations on games that work best with the Steam Deck, but I noticed some of these games that you may want to play may say it's not supported by the Steam Deck. Yes, it's said verify, but I noticed they're not really great when it comes to verification purposes because I play like Fallout New Vegas as an example, it works perfectly fine. But for some reason on the Steam store, it says it's not recommended. But then I recently found Proton, which is another plugin for Decky. If we go into the store and type in Proton, here it is, Proton DB badges, and we hit install. So now with Proton enabled, now if we go to our game, like on the top corner over here, it'll tell you like the rating. Gold means it's fully compatible with this game. Basically it just allows you to better understand like what game truly is compatible versus maybe on Steam side. Cause this game, for example, Arkham City, see how this one gives me the icon from Steam saying it's okay, it may work or may not work. But when we click on it, we get the gold verification from the community from Proton telling us that it will work without any issues and it will actually give you little notes as well if you need to adjust something to make it fully compatible with the remote controller layout on the Steam Deck. So it looks like this game is good, so we have nothing to worry about. And then some of your favorite games, the Steam Deck OLED does support true HDR, which means you can put the screen at max brightness and will go up to a thousand nits, which is quite awesome. And then if your Steam Deck is in the household with a bunch of kids, I would highly recommend setting up a password to lock anybody out that requires like a login information to log into your Steam Deck. If you haven't set this up, again, you'll find it in your system settings in the security tab, and this is where you can enable it. So you can start a password for desktop mode or on power and wake start screen, and you can enter your password pin. And for the best performance, if you have the option to, 40 FPS is ideal. It's a nice sweet in the middle when it comes to low latency, but not so slow FPS. I only find myself enabling 40 FPS for like online multiplayer games because again, 40 FPS with this screen is, gives you the nice in the middle lowest latency. That's not too bad, like 30 FPS. Now, if you're a retro gamer, I'm glad to inform you that the Steam Deck is probably by far the best handheld emulator available in the market. So if you like to set it up for emulator purposes, I'll reference a video that I used in the description down below that basically walk you through everything you need to know and how to install emulators for not just like old school Nintendo games, but also modern day Nintendo games like the GameCube as well as the Nintendo Switch. But if you do have access to like a gaming console, like an Xbox as an example, you can do cloud gaming off this handheld. And the benefits with cloud gaming is since you're not utilizing your internal hardware, you're just utilizing your Wi-Fi network, you'll find yourself having better battery life performance streaming your console games 
onto the Steam Deck. So I'll have a reference video on how to install Xbox Cloud Gaming in the description down below as well. And then as for Minecraft, yes, you can play Minecraft on the Steam Deck. As you see, I have it installed right here. A bit of a process to install it, just like the Xbox Cloud, but I'll also have a reference video in the description for you. Now, if you ever find yourself playing a PC game with mouse functions, remap it so the back buttons is your right and left click. That's how I always find the best experience when it comes to playing PC games on the Steam Deck. Now, by default, your Steam Deck does have internal storage, but thankfully, we do actually have a SD slot right in here. And if you're planning on using an SD card, I do recommend using a fast read and write one. I'll reference one in the description down below. But since I'm personally just using ROMs, I don't need anything crazy. But just insert it and you gave yourself more additional storage. Just make sure to go into your system settings and go into the storage. And then select your SD card and format it. And then you'll be able to utilize that additional space just be sure to make sure you have the correct one selected as default by tapping x and you'll see like a little yellow star right there but if you absolutely want to maintain performance it is recommended you upgrade the internal storage for the steam deck just keep in mind it's not great for the fate of heart as it can be a hassle but it is indeed possible and if you like to change your appearance of your steam deck this back portion right here Super easy to replace and customize it if you want to get like a transparent back case for your Steam Deck. That's super easy and straightforward. Some of these also feature like a better heat track for your CPU so your Steam Deck doesn't heat up as much. And some even feature some amazing LED lights. Just I like, do not recommend changing the entire casing to your Steam Deck because everything needs to come, to come apart, including your display. And after doing a lot of research, like Wolfden has found out, he gave it a 0 out of 10. Does not recommend doing a complete case mod. If you want to watch that video on how long it took him to replace everything just for him to customize the Steam Deck, I also have it linked in the description. I thought it was kind of interesting. And then if you ever want to, you can always put something in the back or pick up like a third party kickstand because the Steam Deck does support a wireless Xbox controller. So you can easily pair this and play your most of your favorite PC games that are compatible with the controller on a wireless controller and you just use this as a display. But if you like to improve the battery life as much as possible, of course you can always open up your settings and literally disable Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Rumble, and Steam Heptics. That will easily squeeze out more battery life. And as you notice, you do have access to night mode. And you can actually create a custom schedule for it to go automatically. But when I'm gaming, I'm just there. I don't care about sleeping. And of course, you can also go to your game settings, graphical settings, and reduce like the frame rate as well as graphics and textures as well to squeeze out a little bit more battery life out of the Steam Deck. And if you run out of games to play, don't forget, on the Steam Store itself, you can always go into Categories and then select Free to Play. You can find a lot of your favorite free to play games here. But if you own some games on other game platforms like Epic Games or Ubisoft as an example, you can actually install the launcher to those games and download it in the desktop mode and have it saved in your Steam library. I'll reference a video on how you could install all your favorite ones. It's very easy compared to how it was a year ago. I'll have that video referenced in the description down below if you want to download like Apex or something like that. And lastly, another downloader I recommend downloading for Decky is CS Loader. If we go into the store right here, you can actually change the theme of your Steam Deck with Variant different like styles to choose from like this one as an example if I tap download Here we go. Now we have the new layout theme that we just selected and If you spend your time you could customize it even more to like different styles you may like Again once more you just need to download the plugin CSS loader another addition you may want to consider downloading is Virant deck this allows you to actually change the Virant color to your game so if you want to increase it to 200, you can. It just basically allows you to enable color settings when you're gaming. So there you guys have it. Those are my favorite tips and tricks as well as some hidden features you could unlock on your Steam Deck. I'll be sure to include once more links to everything referenced in today's video in the description down below, including timestamps. So they're all right there for your pleasure. Hey, real quick, if you'd like to continue watching more, maybe you have CarPlay and you'd like to customize it even more, such as like the ability to turn off the autoplay ability whenever you get in your car. If you'd like to not do that, 
I go through all those customization settings right over there in that video. Thank you so much for watching.